Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 podcast show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And if you're not so sure what you want to do for dinner tonight and need some inspiration, you're really going to love checking out today's guest and her website and Instagram. My guest today is Candace Walker of Proportional Plate. With a focus on life balance and healthy eating, Candace shares her free weekly meal plans, meal prep tips, and even grocery list to keep you healthy throughout the week. Welcome to the podcast, Candace. I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. I am excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So unlike most of my guests, we've actually met in person, which is pretty cool. And we'll probably make this a lot more <laughs> conversational than uh, <laughs> some. <laughs> But when I met you, I, I met through a mutual friend, and I was so impressed by the fact, which you said that your friends are impressed by, and is kind of what led you down the road of making the proportional plate, but is the fact that you actually cook, you know, you do these home-cooked meals every week. So can you talk to us about what you do and kind of maybe a little bit of the backstory around that just to get us started? Of course. So I offer free weekly meal plans. Um, that go out in my newsletter every other week. And it's seven dishes um, with a categorized grocery list. And they all are (laughs) (laughs) healthy-ish. And it started years ago, I was hanging out with a group of friends. And we were talking about our weekly eating habits in the midst of all of our booming, awesome careers that as many of you know we're all working way more than we probably should Mm -hmm. and taking care of ourselves a lot less than we should and it's so easy for us to you know call uber eats or postmates or whatever delivery um and have all these restaurants that are delicious at our disposal and uh, i was finding that you know that's not something i want to take on in my lifestyle and with my financial long-term plan. So Mm -hmm. sitting there with my group of friends and they were just shocked that when I told them I cook dinner every night (laughs) 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 when I get home from work and they were just blown away by that and didn't understand how I had time to do that. And I sat down and I was telling them, okay, look, this is what I do. I look and see what groceries I have left from the week before and I create my plan for what we'll be eating all week. And it's not in stone of, you know, this is Monday, this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday, but Mm. I have a general idea of the next seven to 10 meals that we're going to eat. And I write out the grocery list for all of those meals together. And I grocery shop once and I'm not in the kitchen for more than 30 minutes a day because that's who has time for that. And they were so blown away that they asked me to start texting them my grocery list and tell them what I'm making. Um, So I started doing that and it didn't really make much sense because it's in my little shorthand of, and it doesn't include the things that I already had at home. Right. And uh, in the winter one year, and I get uh, two weeks off in the winter, um, and that year we happened to take a little bit more time off than that because um, my father-in-law wasn't doing so, so well. Mm. Um, so we went up to be with my in-laws and, um, and I was like, oh, let me play around with making a website. And so I actually created a way that I could share a grocery list with recipes and all of that with my friends and started playing around with sharing that with, you know, social media. And it ended up growing into this thing where, Hopefully, a lot of the people who follow me actually use it um, because I found that if someone's doing that legwork for you, um, they're telling you what groceries to get. You can even push a button and order them 
order your groceries and you'll still be saving quite a bit of money during the week and you'll still get to control what ingredients go into your food and make sure that you are making the choices that you want to make um, with your diet. So hopefully that wasn't too long, but no. donation. Yeah, I know that's that's awesome and I'm still impressed though because you know you say 30 minutes but it seems like almost too good to be true that I could be like done that quickly so <laughs> you, I am sure you know the two vary by recipe but do you have any like tips just for those of us that are thinking you know that sounds really good but maybe you can do it cuz you're so skilled in the kitchen but maybe I can't. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I do in my emails I always give some shortcuts you can take. And I give the day by day little meal prep tips. So for Mm -hmm. example, um, sometimes there's, you know, a roasted chicken dish that actually takes you five minutes, but it's cooking for, I don't know, an hour, let's say. Mm -hmm. Um, So you're in the kitchen for five minutes, it's cooking for an hour. So let's say you you wanted to kill maybe 20 minutes of that time. Here are some things you can do to get tomorrow's dinner prepped ahead, you can chop these vegetables and you can, you know, put them in a sealed container in the fridge, or you can make this salad dressing. Um, so there's little tips like that as well for how to minimize that time in the kitchen. And yes, yeah, some recipes are, you know, an hour and a half, but an hour of that, you're not doing anything. You can, you know, go in another room while it's cooking and, you know, hang out with your family or read a book or whatever, listen to this podcast, whatever you feel like doing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay. No, I like that. That's awesome that you get to share those tips and people can kind of learn as they go. Well, we, we talked about this when we were hanging out the other day, just the fact that, you know, there's things that you probably learn. The more you cook, you probably learn some of those shortcuts and they become second nature. But if you're not cooking that often, like myself, then, <laughs> then you know, it's, yeah. it's hard to really see how it could be so much easier or take up less time. Exactly. And so that, that's kind of the point of why I created, created all of this. It's because, you know, that isn't what works for most people. Most people's brains don't work that way. And I just happen to be doing it long enough that I've learned. And so instead of, you know, saying you should be doing this because it works for me, instead, I've already done the work. All right, friends, that sound was your halfway point reminder if you are joining us and going for an out and back walk and only have 15 minutes, you will want to turn around now. All right, back to our conversation. I'm telling you exactly what shortcuts you can take. Like, for example, um, don't make your own marinara sauce. Um, Take these ingredients off your grocery list and buy a jar. So things, everything from that to the step-by-step of how you can manage that meal for the day. Mm -hmm. Um, And even the grocery list already written for you, so you don't have to go from recipe to recipe and write them all down and then combine them and reorder them. So when you're in the pasta aisle at the grocery store, you're not like, oh, I forgot these things when I was in produce. So a big part of what I do is just taking that work out for you Mm -hmm. so that you can enjoy the benefits of, of cooking and eating at home without all the work. I love that. I mean, well, that's something I read about just in several different books. I can't even think of an example of one right now, but just the fact that we have to make so many decisions during the day. So sometimes what keeps us from Mm -hmm. actually doing something healthy, whether it's getting that workout in or actually taking the time to cook versus order out is that we just don't even feel like make, like we don't even have the bandwidth to make a decision about like what to cook or you know, what we're going to do for our workout or, you know, finding the outfit we're going to put on. So it seems silly, but the fact that, you know, you're taking out that guesswork for us is, is pretty cool and should be, should help us stay on track a little bit more, hopefully. Thank you. I agree. And I've found that when I get lazy and I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, let's treat ourselves and do takeout one night. We'll sit there for, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, just trying to decide what we want to eat. Sometimes we get frustrated and then we have to wait 30 minutes to an hour for it to be delivered. And at that point, I'm like, well, if I have the groceries, I could have just made it. Right, right. And then I'm not getting, and then I'm getting the benefits of using good oils, controlling the seasoning and knowing exactly what's going into my food. So for me, it it ends up being a pro, like a win in, in all those aspects. Right. No, for sure. No, that's awesome. One thing I love that you mentioned earlier, even on the podcast, was just, you know, 
you do this meal prep, but you're not like, okay, Monday is this Tuesday. It's not very rigid. I think, I think that's helpful for Mm -hmm. people to understand that they don't have to, you know, become like robots to, to be a little bit healthier. Do you have any insights, I guess, for that? Or like, you know, just making these healthier choices because you also have this focus on things are, you know, this is proportional plate and everything. And there's this balance that, that I think people could benefit from your, your thoughts on that. On just uh, balance with eating. In yeah. General. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I eat. Okay. Let's, let's just, <laughs> let me be honest here. So I eat meat. I'll drink alcohol. I enjoy decadent desserts. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't believe that you need to cut things out of your diet because mm-hmm. they're quote unquote bad. Right. Um, do I think it would be bad if you finished every meal with like a three scoop ice cream sundae? Absolutely. <laughs> but I believe like you shouldn't have to cut ice cream out of your diet. Completely. Mm. So you can enjoy things in moderation. And, you know, I still build my meal plans around the foods I'm craving. Um, and I'll eat, you know, Chinese, homemade Chinese takeout and, you know, ramen and all these delicious things that you see all over social media and at your mm-hmm. favorite restaurants. Um, but I'm, you know, controlling my proportions. You know, I'll have, I'll eat mostly plants. So I minimize the amount of protein that I eat. Um, my seven meal meal plan has one meat dish, one fish dish, one chicken dish, and the other mm-hmm. four are always vegetarian. So it's about really keeping that balance and still eating the foods you're craving because sometimes that's because your body really needs those specific nutrients. Right. Um, so definitely going in and, you know, if you're feeling like you really want a steak, like going for that meat dish that night, or mm-hmm. if you're feeling like something lighter, you know, grabbing that salad and saving, saving some of the heavier dishes for other nights. So it's about listening to your body and what your body needs because everybody's body and lifestyle is very different. Um, and for me, a big part of eating proportionally is learning your body and learning what your body wants. So learning what foods make you feel strong and powerful and energized and balanced and what foods are making you feel sluggish and moody and unbalanced so that you know what to keep in and take out of your own diet. Does that well, answer your question? Yeah, no, for sure. That's, that's awesome. You know, I, I think that's a good point because this time of year, you know, we can be looking for the, you know, the fad diet that's popular or maybe a friend used <laughs> last month and was successful, but we don't want to encourage people to go on a diet. I, I follow the same thing, like do things in moderation and try to have more whole fruits and vegetables. It's like a good, good thing it just makes you feel better. And they can be really mm-hmm. delicious mm-hmm. if they're in season and can kind of vary it that way. But I think most of the time, if we do look at those fad diets, maybe your friend lost, you know, like 50 pounds last year on a specific diet. And you're thinking that you're going to try it this year you know, the fact that it's a diet, I would not recommend, but, but also the fact that, you know, it might've worked for your friend, but, but the fact um, that what you mentioned too, is that we are all different. So what's going to work for us, you know, when it comes to weight loss or what's going to work for our bodies and just have us feel better is not going to be the same person to person. So, you know, even if we were to recommend a very specific diet, um, not that we want to do that, but (laughs) if we, if we were asked to do that, I feel like it's really hard to do it just because of, of that fact that we're all we are all different. So I do like that point. And just, I like what you shared. You, I really like, I think everyone should go, I'll, I'll put a link to this just to your about page because you have, you know, you kind of ended it with talking about celebrating you by learning what's, what's different and in learning more about yourself for even the foods that are good for you. So that's a really good challenge and way for people to think about things at this time of year versus, you know, trying to deprive themselves for other reasons. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And even for small things like inflammatory foods, for example, mm-hmm. I know that. Um, so for me, I have psoriasis, which is a skin condition that is triggered by inflammatory foods. And so mm-hmm. some people would say that I'm allergic to some inflammatory foods, which include, you know, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. And sure. I, you know, being someone who loves food, I don't want to cut those things out of my diet completely, but I've learned how to eat them in moderation so that they don't trigger my skin condition, but I can also still enjoy them. So it's going to be different for everybody. And it's just important for you to learn to learn you and, um, and still keep it healthy, keep yourself active um, and 
just try to make those small choices that are different instead of, you know, choosing that big thing that's going to take over your January and you'll forget about the rest of the year. And right. instead start creating just some small healthy habits that you enjoy that you'll be able to easily carry through the whole year. I love that. Yeah, I think by the time I share this episode, I have a drop two sizes challenge that it probably has already started. But one of the key things I'm able to guarantee that people can get a result of dropping two sizes is not a strict like special plan I'm putting them on. It's just small steps of being consistent with workouts, eating more whole fruits and vegetables, and then making mm-hmm. small changes that, that work for, for them, which are going to be different for, for everyone. So for people that missed out right, on that, right. they can still kind of take some of these tips. <laughs> Yeah. And the biggest tip, if you're looking to control your weight, and it <laughs> sounds ridiculous and it should, should sound intuitive. And it's on my website. It's one of the rules I follow. And mm-hmm. I promise you, I follow it probably 95% of the time and I forget the other five. Um, and that's okay as well. But to just stop eating when you're full, you know, right. uh, a lot of us eat just to keep busy. Um, mm-hmm. Or if something is just so delicious, we'll just like eat way too much of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just to stop eating when you're full is a, is a great lifestyle choice that you could take on that doesn't sacrifice anything you're already eating. Just it, it puts you in a, it'll put you in a different mindset for how you're interacting with your food. Yeah, that's so important. We, and I've had people on to talk about intuitive eating, which I think is, you know, follows, that's a, v- a pr- pretty big tenant because you can always have more of it later, you know, and you'll enjoy it more if you're present, mm-hmm. just like you'll enjoy anything in your life if you're present while you're enjoying it, right? Versus right. distracted. So that is an awesome tip. Very cool. Well, one totally. thing that is exciting for us too, with the timeline of when we'll, I'll share the uh, episode with everyone is that you're launching a, a free 20 recipe ebook. So how can people get that for themselves? And do you want to share any, any like sneak peek tips about it to get them uh, to actually go check it out? (laughs) So I've chosen my 20 most popular recipes from the blog and Mm. I've put them all together in an ebook and um, I'm offering that ebook for free because the recipes are also for free on my website. Mm. Um, but this is a nice little package for you to see, you know, what everyone else is loving off of my website right now. Um, so it's my 20 favorites from the blog. Mm-hmm. And um, you get it for free by just heading to my website. And you'll see a pop-up come up on the screen. And um, it'll tell you to sign up. You just have to enter your email and your first name. And that's it. And uh, it'll sign you up for my newsletter, which goes out every other week with the three weekly meal plans um, with the grocery lists. And, and yeah, so you get the ebook and you get these meal plans and it's all free. So you don't have any excuses not to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I definitely have to get on your list for that and, and just to be able to be more inspired to get into a better cooking routine myself. So <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And the more the merrier. Yeah. And I guess you're, so you're kind of on everywhere on social media, but is there a place that you recommend people go the most? Or do you want to just tell us like, your handle? Just, I mean, we have mentioned it, but. Yeah. So um, I'm at proportional plate on Instagram, which is the fun sort of get inspired and excited by delicious photos of food that make you hungry and, and are healthy-ish for you. Um, and then I'm also on Pinterest at Proportional Plate if you are interested in seeing what I'm getting inspired by. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, Twitter and Facebook as well. And then um, the newsletter is the best way to stay on top of the new recipes that I'm launching because I always put the new recipes in my meal plans and you'll get to see them there first before anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, I'm Pretty much, you get to pick your own poison, <laughs> um, depending on what you enjoy. And uh, as you know, with uh, Facebook and Twitter, it'll link directly to the recipes and Pinterest. So mm-hmm. if you're interested in that, you can go there. And if you're more interested in just looking at delicious food, Instagram is definitely the choice for you. Very cool. And de- I definitely can relate to looking at your Instagram and just feeling very hungry. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's true that's the best compliment thank you <laughs> but that's why they should get on the email list instead so then they can have the list and then you know like get it ready and then and actually make it too yeah. 
<laughs> and every once in a while, I'll put a more difficult recipe on there okay. that isn't as beginner or maybe it takes a little bit more time. Mm-hmm. And I will never include those in the weekly meal plan, but sometimes okay. they'll be in there as a bonus recipe for those of you who want to take your cooking to another level. Very cool. Well, Candace, it's been really fun chatting with you and I'm glad to share your, your tips and insights with the listener. So thank you for, for hanging out today. Thanks for having me. It's always fun talking with you. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fit 15. If you did, go and do me a favor and head on over to iTunes, Stitcher, both, or wherever you listen to podcasts and leave us a rating and review so that other people can find the podcast and you can make my day. And maybe because I just attended Alt Summit, a great conference for entrepreneurs that had a lot of podcasters, maybe I can start getting you some special deals by attracting more sponsors to the show with your reviews and subscriptions. So I am not beyond bribing at this point. I really want your ratings and reviews. On a more serious note, if you consider me serious, this is the first day of April. It's April Fool's Day, but this is not an April Fool's Day joke. This week, we have a first Friday fitness class. So what this means is that if you are a first timer, a new person to our fitness classes, you can enjoy Friday's class. It's a group online fitness class provided over live video chat and limited to 11 participants. You can join it for free if you sign up and follow the directions on the sign up page, which is fitarmadillo.com slash classes. So don't wait, head on over there as soon as you can. I just got back from a conference, as I mentioned, and there were a lot of great ladies there and I told them about the class. So I want to make sure that you get first dibs on it because you are one of my awesome listeners. So go and check that out. It will be linked in the show notes, but fitarmadillo.com slash classes is where to go if you want to go there right now. Limited space is available. If you do go there and you see that the time is not a good time for you this coming Friday, then still stay on that page and complete the survey I have there to share the best days and times for you for future classes because I have not set May's class yet and If this class goes well, I will do another class for you in May, and I want to make sure it's at a time that does work for you. So that's what's going on this week. It's not a joke. We do have a free class. Make sure you you go check that out. And one other thing that's happening this month, lots lots of things are actually happening this month. So one thing I want to bring to your attention is that this is a month that I do usually run my Drop Two Sizes Fitness Challenge, a 10-week program where I guarantee you will drop two dress or pants sizes in that amount of time or your money back. Now, I usually offer this program and teach the live classes myself. So I have live fitness classes for the group every time the workouts change, but I have a stress fracture, so that's not going to be happening. (laughs) So what I've decided to do instead is to change the program up, at least for this time through. I probably won't do this again because I want to provide more support and We'll have to see how this one goes. But instead of having the live classes for everyone, I'm going to offer the program at a reduced rate where there will not be live classes unless you want to purchase them, purchase the session with uh, your private trainer. So that will be available. I will make sure the trainers know the workouts ahead of time. Or if we get a group together at a time that works for everyone, I will have one of the other trainers teach that class and do that at a reduced rate as more of a small group training versus a private session. So if you've been thinking about doing the program but couldn't afford it and you're self-motivated and you don't think you would need the help going over the fitness moves other than looking at the show, not show notes, (laughs) the actual notes from the workout and the workout video itself, you feel confident with that, then this might be a good time for you to check out the program. So you can go to fitarmadillo.com slash D2S, D as in drop, two as in the number two, and SS in sizes and get on the wait list. You'll see that the pricing is not reduced right now. Did I mention I was just at a conference? I was at a conference for a full week and I need to catch up on some logistical things. But if you get on the wait list, you'll be the first to know about 
that and the first to be able to sign up, I'll do an early bird option. And then the week that the challenge starts, I will have it at regular price. So I hope you're able to take advantage of that. I hope you take advantage of that free class this Friday. And I look forward to chatting with you tomorrow. Make sure you are subscribed to the show so you don't forget to listen to the next episode. Chat more then. Bye.